The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, smoking enjoyment depends on taste, and taste alone. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And you can taste the difference in a Lucky Strike. So mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. Yes, Luckies taste better, and here's why. First, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild tobacco that tastes better. There's no substitute for fine tobacco, and don't let anybody tell you different. Second, Luckies are made to taste better. In fact, they're the best made of all five principal brands. Yes, that's a fact. Established by tests measuring those important factors of workmanship that affect the taste of cigarettes. Tests made in the research laboratory of the American Tobacco Company and verified by leading independent laboratory consultants. So remember, your smoking enjoyment depends on taste and taste alone, and you'll find Lucky's taste better. Always so mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Mrs. Don Wilson. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the star of the Lucky Strike Program, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Mrs. Wilson, I must say you read that introduction beautifully. Thank you. Now, if Don were introducing me, he would have tried... Hey, Jackson, what's going on? Why isn't Wilson here? Because last Sunday on my television show, he made one little mistake. <laughs> Just one little mistake, and he had a nervous breakdown. No. Yes, at the close of my television show, Don was supposed to say, be happy-go-lucky. But somehow he got mixed up and said, be lucky, go happy. It was nothing. Well, you say it's nothing because you don't understand the complexities of emotional reactions. <laughs> complexities of emotional reactions? And I know what I'm talking about. I once made a mistake. And for months, I couldn't look people in the eye. I was shunned, a social outcast. My friends wouldn't talk to me. Phil, for heaven's sake, what did you do? I put a cherry in a martini. <laughs> No! <laughs> a cherry and a martini. Why, Phil, I, I don't blame your friends for shunning you. Well, I didn't mind that, but they tied me to a post and gave me 20 lashes with a swizzle stick. <laughs> Phil, go sit down and stop making up jokes. Now, Mrs. Wilson, is Don really so upset about that mistake he made that he couldn't come to work? Oh, yes, Mr. Benny. Last Sunday, when he came home right after the television show, I had to coax him to the dinner table. He just sipped at the consomme and nibbled at the salad but I knew something was wrong when he didn't eat the T-bone. Don didn't eat the steak? No, the bone. He ate the steak. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> you, mean, you mean to say when Don eats the steak, he eats the bones too? That's why we had to get rid of our dogs. Such fights. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine. But, Mrs. Wilson, if Don is as broken up as you say he is, I better call and reassure him that his little mistake was nothing. After all, anybody could have said, be lucky, go happy, instead of be happy, go lucky. Such a serious thing. Hello, Don Wilson's resident. Uh, Jack Benny calling. Is this the butler? No, this is the doctor. Doctor? Oh, my goodness. How long have you been there? Oh, I've been taking care of Mr. Wilson for the past week. Past week? He also has a nurse. A nurse, too? 
Oh, my goodness, he must be a nervous wreck. Well, tell me, Doctor, when do you think Mr. Wilson will be ready to go back to work? Well, uh, when is your next television show? Five weeks from now, March 9th. Oh, good, good. By then, I'm sure he will have calmed down enough to shave. <laughs> shave? Yes, in his present condition, I wouldn't dare let him have anything sharp. <laughs> But this is ridiculous. Just because he made a little mistake and said, be lucky, go happy? Doctor, let me talk to him. I'm afraid he won't talk to anybody. He jumped out of bed this morning and shut himself in the closet. Well, you, you tell him it's Jack Benny calling. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hold on. Mr. Wilson. Oh, Mr. Wilson. It's be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. It isn't be lucky, go happy. It's be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. So simple. How did I ever mix it up? I never mixed up that other one. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. <laughs> Why couldn't I have said be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Mr. Wilson. Be happy, go lucky. Mr. Benny. Yes, doctor. What did Mr. Wilson say? Be happy, go lucky. <laughs> well, at least he's getting it right. Goodbye, doctor. Goodbye. Did you talk to Don, Mr. Benny? No, Mrs. Wilson. He shut himself up in the closet and the doctor can't get him out. Oh, dear. I hope he isn't stuck again. Again? <laughs> yes. The last time he made a mistake, he forced himself into a closet and we had to break down the wall to get him out. <laughs> the last time he made a mistake? Yes, don't you remember? Two years ago, on one of your programs, he was supposed to say, I saw it in Drew Pearson's column. But instead of saying Drew Pearson, he said Drear Poosson. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, don't worry about it, Mrs. Wilson. I'm sure Don will be all right pretty soon. Now, kids, let's get on with the show. Oh, because... hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Dennis, it's about time you got here. I hope you have a good excuse for being late. Oh, I have. You see, I was walking down the street, and I passed a gas station, and there was a car standing there getting gas. And you had to stop and watch the car getting gasoline? Oh, it wasn't that. There was a dog in the back seat of the car that attracted my attention. A white French poodle. Oh, well, that is a rare species. Yeah. It? The man told me the dog was worth over $2,000. Gee. And while I was standing there, the attendant happened to accidentally spill some gasoline on the ground. And before the man could stop him, the dog jumped out of the car and lapped up all the gasoline. Gosh. And then he made a crazy dash down the street, and when he got about two blocks away, he suddenly stopped and flopped right over on his side. Dead? No, we ran out of gas. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis. Hey, Phil, look how red he's getting. Yeah. <laughs> you told me that story would burn him up. <laughs> yeah. Phil, did you give Dennis that story? Yeah, Jackson, loosen up, laugh a little That's a funny story It's funny, it's funny Dennis, how much did Phil charge you for that story? Oh, he didn't charge me anything It was an exchange An exchange? Yeah, he told me the story And I told him all about the complexities of emotional reactions <laughs> I wondered where he got it Now I'm wondering where you got it The doctor wrote it on my birth certificate <laughs> That I can believe now, look, kid, it's time for your song, so let's have it. Okay. Oh, hold it a minute, kid. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mr. Wilson's doctor. Yes, yes. Uh, we just x-rayed Mr. Wilson and found some broken bones. Broken bones? Where? In his stomach. Tell Mrs. Wilson he finished his dinner. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. Sing, Dennis. Sometimes the thunder and lightning 
make all the little clouds high. He said, have faith in all kinds of weather, for the sun will always shine. Do your best and always remember the dark clouds pass with time. Just how hard all the little clouds try That's why I think I'll always remember The little white clouds that cry He said, have faith in all kinds of weather For the sun will always shine Just how hard all the little clouds try That's why I think I'll always remember A little white cloud that sat right down That was Little White Cloud That Cried, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris and his Gruen Wristwatch Orchestra. <laughs> and now, folks... Well, that's a new one. Jackson, why did you call my band the Gruen Wristwatch Orchestra? Phil, if I've got to listen to them, I might as well get something for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jackson. You have just cast aspersions on a musical group that only last week played at the formal opening of the Pismo Beach Grunion Festival. <laughs> Very funny, Phil, but I happen to know that last week those little fish called Grunion weren't running. That's why the committee hired my band. What? They put my boys on a barge, towed them three miles out. They played That's What I Like About the South, and the Grunion hit the beach like it was D-Day. <laughs> Really drove the fish out of the water, huh? Well, I don't want to brag, but it was the first time they had halibut dancing in the streets at Oxenard. <laughs> no, no, Phil, that's not bragging. If you did it, you did it. <laughs> However, tomorrow I'm taking a rumba lesson at Arthur Murray's, and if my partner turns out to be a flounder, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. <laughs> so, Phil, the next time I say anything about your boys, just let it go. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Dennis. How come Mary isn't here? Huh? Oh, oh Mary's in Palm Springs. See, next week I have to go to New York. Mary's going with me, so I thought I'd let her take a little vacation. You never give me a vacation. Well, Dennis, when I give Mary a week off, we can fill in with more dialogue, but it's difficult to have a program without a song, so I can't do without a singer. Excuses, excuses. Huh? You gave Kenny Baker a vacation. <laughs> what? He's been gone 12 years. <laughs> oh. Dennis. When's he coming back? I'm getting tired. <laughs> Dennis, I didn't give Kenny Baker a vacation. He left because of another job that paid more money. Gee, didn't that upset you? No, I was his agent. <laughs> anyway, Dennis, that must be Don Wilson's doctor with another report. Hello? I have a long-distance call for Mr. Jack Benny from Palm Springs. Oh, this is Jack Benny. One moment, please. The Palm Springs Biltmore Hotel. I have Miss Livingston's party. I'm sorry, but Miss Livingston went out to play golf about ten minutes ago. Mr. Benny, Miss Livingston's not in now. Gee, and I was so anxious to talk to her. If you like, you can talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> to you? Yes, I have a message for you. Oh, what is it? 
Will you go over to Miss Livingston's house and leave a note for the milkman? Well, certainly. What shall I say? Just say, sorry, I couldn't meet you last night. <laughs> Miss Livingston wants me to leave that note for the milkman? No, I do. I get to town once in a while, kid. <laughs> Okay, I'll do that for you. Now, when Miss Livingston comes, in, comes back, I'll tell her. Ow! Miss, Miss, what frightened you? Two mackerel just came through the lobby and they were dancing. <laughs> Gee, Phil's orchestra really drove them inland, didn't it? What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Goodbye. Now, Phil, since Don didn't prepare a, prepare a commercial for the sportsman, you will have Just to... Just a minute, Mr. Benny. Yes, Mrs. Wilson. I have a commercial for the sportsman to do. In fact, we rehearsed it this morning, didn't we, boys? Mm. Well, Mrs. Wilson, I think it's wonderful that you... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, what did you call for? I want to ask you, boss, how long will you be in New York? About a week. You want me to run the usual ad in the paper? What ad? About renting your house while you're gone. <laughs> no, Rochester, not for just one week. You know. Boss, you sure are a changed man. What do you mean? You once rented your house when you went to the movies. <laughs> it was a Jane Russell picture, and I didn't know when I'd get back. <laughs> Now, Rochester, hang up and get back to your work. Boss, I have been working. I washed the dishes, polished the silver, vacuumed the rugs, waxed the floors, mopped the kitchen, and after I finish listening to your program, I'm going to clean the woodwork and wash the windows. Wait a minute. You're taking time out to listen to my program? What do you mean, time out? That's work, too. <laughs> oh, well, Rochester, I'll be home right after the show. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Mr. Wolfie Gilbert was here to see you. Wolfie Gilbert? The songwriter? Yeah, I told him you were at the studio and he's on his way down to see you right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Rochester, did you tell him about the song I wrote? No, boss. Why not? That and how you look in the morning are my guarded secrets. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll tell him myself when he gets here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, kids, Wolfie Gilbert, the songwriter, is coming over to see me. What a songwriter. You know, he wrote Waiting for the Robert E. Lee, Down Yonder, The Peanut Vendor, Lilac Time, and oh, a great bunch of songs. Gee, I'll be glad to see him. Now, Mrs. Wilson, before he gets here, we better do the commercial. What's the thing you've prepared with the boys? Well, Mr. Benny, since Don is so upset over the mistake he made on your television show, I thought it would be nice if the boys sang something to cheer him up a little. Well, good. Don will probably be listening to it. Take it, boys. Be lucky and go happy, that is what Don Wilson said. Now 40 million people know why he is sick in bed. But don't you worry, Don, oh boy, you'll still collect your pay. If in the future you make sure that this is what you say. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Get out of bed and take a walk, the air will do you good. Don't try to hide to save your pride, your fluff was understood. Why, any one of us could make a similar mistake. But don't feel bad, just watch it, Dad, be right for goodness sake. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better tasty. Happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Be happy and go lucky is a slogan you know well. So say it right on Sunday night or I will get Von Zell. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Now, that was wonderful, Mrs. Wilson, and if Don heard it, I'm sure it must have brightened up his little closet. Now, kids, as soon as we... Hey, hey, that must be Wolfie Gilbert now. Come in. Hello, Jack. Wolfie! (laughs) 
Wolfie, it certainly is a pleasure to see you. Well, I stopped over at your house, and Rochester sent me to the studio. Yes, I know, I know. And, Jack, I wish you'd tell Mary I'm sorry that I only had a dime. What are you talking about? Mary's in Palm Springs. She is? Yes. Well, who's that girl who checked my hat? <laughs> oh, that's Barbara Stanwyck. <laughs> Barbara Stanwyck checking hats for you? Wasn't she on your television show last Sunday? Yes, and she didn't read the fine print in her contract. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Wolfie, I'd like you to meet my orchestra leader. Oh, Phil, this is Mr. Gilbert, the famous songwriter. Glad to know you, Gilbert. Where's Sullivan? Uh (laughs) This isn't Gilbert and Sullivan. This is Wolfie Gilbert. He had nothing to do with Sullivan. Now, Dennis, come here, and I'll... Dennis, don't you want to shake hands with Mr. Gilbert? Sure not. He wouldn't be after having anything to do with the Sullivan. In truth, we got in bad fest to him, too. (laughs) Dennis, behave yourself. Now, Wolfie... (laughs) <laughs> How he got mixed up with an Irish line I'll never understand A straight line, yes But an Irish line This I will never figure out <clears throat> Now, Wolfie Was there something Was there something special Something special you wanted to see me about? Uh, that, yes, Jack Yes, Jack I really had a trip to make over here I wanted to talk to you about the song you wrote Uh-huh you know, I heard that you've been having a little bad luck I mean, about Well, trouble with it Yeah, well, yes And frankly, I can't understand it, Wolfie I wrote my song three months ago And it still isn't on the hit parade I haven't even been able to get it published Well, Jack, believe me, it's nothing to worry about You mustn't become discouraged You know, it isn't easy to get a song to be a hit But, Wolfie, you didn't have any trouble Look at Robert E. Lee, Lilac Time, the peanut vendor And how about your latest hit, Down Yonder? Everybody is singing that Yes, I know, Jack. I'm grateful. But that's what I wanted to tell you. It's true, Down Yonder is a hit today. When I wrote that some song 30 years ago, it was a flop. Down Yonder was a flop? Yeah, uh, Jack, today, and it is a big hit. I know, I know. Well, so you see, Jack, 30 years from now, your song may be a success, too. <laughs> I mean, but who can wait that long? I'm 39 now. (laughs) In 30 years, I'll be 45. (laughs) By the way, how old are you? 65. And they call you Wolfie? (laughs) Quiet, Phil. By the way, why do they... Why do they call you Wolfie? Well, I didn't spend all my time waiting for the Robert E. Lee. (laughs) You know, that Waiting for the Robert E. Lee was a great song, too. Now, Wolfie, as one composer to another, how do you... (laughs) Wolfie, how do you go about writing your songs? Jack, it is really inspiration, mostly inspiration. Now, you take Robert E. Lee. I happened to be in New Orleans one morning. I was sitting on the levee, looking over the broad Mississippi. It was a beautiful day, and I felt wonderful. As I watched this solitary riverboat loom out of the morning haze and majestically drift by, an idea, some words, a lyric, came to my mind, and I just had to put it down on paper. Now tell me, Jack, what inspired you to write your song? Well, it's an amazing coincidence, Wolfie. One day I came home after a broadcast. It was a dismal, rainy day. I had a headache. My stomach was upset. (laughs) My feet hurt. And as I walked into the house, I tripped and broke my glasses and split my lip. (laughs) Then I sat down and wrote, when you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. (laughs) And yet, from the lyrics and music of my song, you'd never guess how much I was suffering, would you? Well, who's got enough money in the bank to answer that? (laughs) Phil, be quiet. Well, anyway, Wolfie, I do want to thank you for your advice, and it made me feel a whole lot better. But as long as you're here, how about you and I doing one of the numbers you wrote? Robert E. Lee. How about it, folks? <laughs> now, Wolfie, Wolfie, I'll get my violin and you start the burst and we'll each take a part of it, the quartet too. Wait till I get my violin. Okay, boys, let's have it. Hi, hi. 
Way down on the levee in old Alabama Their daddy and mammy, little Ephraim and Sammy On a moonlight night you can find them all While they're waiting, the banjos are syncopating What's that they're saying, what's that they're saying While they keep playing, I'm humming and swaying It's a good ship, Robert E. Lee That's come to carry the cotton away Watch them shuffling along See them shuffling along Go take your best yes. gal, gal, your real we, pal Go down, down to the, the levee, I said to I the, the levee And just join that shuffling throng Hear that music and song It's simply great, great. mate Wait. Waiting, Waiting on the levee, waiting for the Here I come, Bobby <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wolfie. Thank you very much. You're an inspiration to young songwriters. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I hope I inspired you, too. <laughs> oh, you did. You did. So long, Wolfie. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your armed forces are short of 300,000 pints of blood a month a shortage that may cost us thousands of American lives. We know you are going to give blood. We ask that you give it now. Call your Red Cross today. This is an urgent request. Remember, a gift of blood is a gift from the heart. Thank you. Mr. Benny, we'll be back in just a moment. But first... Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, whenever you want the smooth, mellow, completely enjoyable taste of truly fine tobacco, reach for a Lucky. For the difference between just smoking and really enjoying your smoke is the taste of a cigarette. And Lucky's taste better for two important reasons. First, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild tobacco that tastes better. There's no substitute for fine tobacco, and don't let anybody tell you different. Second, Luckies are made to taste better. In fact, they're the best made of all five principal brands. Yes, you'll be happy when you go Lucky, because Luckies taste better. So mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. So next time you buy cigarettes, try a carton of Luckies. You'll find Luckies taste better. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Well, folks, this ends another show. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the very same... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Don Wilson's doctor. Oh, yes, doctor. Is Don feeling better? Yes, I'm happy to report that he came out of the closet. Good. I took his pulse and it's normal. His heartbeat is strong. His blood pressure is fine. I took his temperature, and it's 46. 46? Isn't that a little low? Not for a man who's hiding in the deep freeze. <laughs> well, when he thaws out, tell him that I hope he'll be better soon. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is Mrs. Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. The Jack Denny program has been selected as one of the programs to be heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the armed forces radio service. Stay tuned for the Anderson Andy show which follows immediately. This is the CBS Radio Network.